So hello everybody. My name is Victor Pena with Omniprint International. I'm here with Mario Tovar. He is the founder of Marzuno Creative. Mario, thank you for having me here. Thank really you. Appreciate it. So one of the main goals is I want to have a conversation with Mario because I've seen, you know, hundreds of print businesses, hundreds of creative companies, and my main mission is to kind of expand the mind and show everybody how some different techniques, different ways of doing things, and kind of, you know, just talk with you a little bit mm -hmm. about how you built your business over the years and, you know, how you can inspire others to, to do the same thing. So maybe you could tell me a little bit about your business, you know, what, what do you do at Marzuno and, and how, you know, you started and all that. Yeah, definitely. So um, we're a vertically integrated uh, direct-to-garment print facility um, from marketing to sales to design to actually getting it into stores and fulfilling it, uh, you know, all over the U.S., all over the Americas. Um, and we primarily work with uh, streetwear brands and startup brands. Um, that approach me, you know, after meeting them at trade shows and what and whatnot. Whether they have uh, an idea in their head, they want me to, to, to bring it to life. Um, they know that we're like a one-stop shop, like a true one-stop shop. We haven't been always been doing this. You know, we started as a web agency. We kind of, you know, converted into this now. Yeah. You know, which is what what the marketplace is, is is dictating and what it needs. Yeah, and what what's uh, like what's your background like? You know, did you go to school? Did you like you're saying you you had an agency before? What did mm -hmm. you do before this? So I went to school for design. I was yeah. a designer, um, but I always had like that business kind of mentality, you know. Uh, once I graduated and I, I kind of stopped working at the bank, I kind of started. Uh, I started working at agencies, design agencies, doing stuff for like major like corporations, like the the, the major ones you would you, you would think. After that, I kind of started my own agency, and it was strictly all web web development. Um, back around like 2011, you know, everything kind of crashed in yeah. terms of web. At, at that time, I I, I kind of knew that I didn't want to go back to working for anyone. Yeah. So I saw this, you know, emerging, you know, um, DTG, you know, technology, and I decided to kind of jump at it, and uh, it was the best thing I could have ever done, you know. Yeah, awesome. I was able to utilize all my skill sets to, to create my own brands. How important do you think is understanding uh, marketing and the, the flow when, you, when you're starting a business? It's very important, yeah. you know. I mean, just to, to, to break it down to, to, to layman's term, I guess, is... is Marketing is essentially being on the street and showing everyone your shirt and, and making everyone buy it. You know, it's just obviously taking it to another level with, with Facebook and TikTok and Snapchat and everything like that. Yeah. But uh, at the at the essence of it, that's what it is. Just getting it's kind of like the street signs. You know, yeah. just, you know that's what it yeah. is. But just doing it properly and with a technique to it and knowing it and, and learning it yourself is is by far the probably the best thing ever. You know, if not, you're gonna spend all your non-existent startup money on people that are gonna charge you for not making money yeah you know? exactly yeah. exactly so it's like being being able to know what you're doing when it comes to marketing and actually showing to your customers in the in the in the correct way is super important i think and i wanted to highlight that because a lot of people start up saying hey well, i have this huge idea of whatever it is this widget but then you don't have an idea of how to present it uh, how to do the marketing to get the attention for your customer to set, to 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 buy from you, right? Right. So that's one of the different things that I've seen you do across different sectors: screen printing and DTG, and and uh, you know putting your product out there. Is that you actually you know you've done stuff from going to shows, like to the biggest shows, mm -hmm. and you've done stuff, you know, going to a street fair and setting up a table. Yeah. You know, you've done everything in between. I think sometimes people forget that the the hustle to do these kind of things from A to Z is important. You yeah, know what I mean, mm -hmm. so like, if you could share some of the beginnings of your brand, like, what was the initial like marketing steps that you took to to get noticed? Yeah, you know, it, you know, just kind of taking it back to that, and I never forget that. You know, it's just a. The, the humility and, and all that, that that it takes to to kind of go down that long road, you know. Um, I remember the first time I went to Magic, like in 2010 or something like that. It was epic, you know. It's yeah. it's But at the same time, it's overwhelming because you want to be there, you know. So, so you went as a visitor. I went as a visitor. You had to get snuck in, you know. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. you don't, you don't, you don't, you're not even an actual company then. But when I actually decided to, to get up and start my own brand, I started with a few designs, you know. But I, I remember, I mean, I had no money, you know. So... 
I would have to go to screen printers and and kind of say, hey, can you can you do me a favor? Do me a favor, even though I'm gonna pay you to print yeah. this. And they kind of always kind of roll their eyes at you, saying, yeah. you know, you only want like 24 little units, you know, and it's it's a little you know it's a little setback, but you don't let that hold you back, you know. Yeah. So when I finally did get my shirts, and you know, it took me three four months to kind of move them, and I got to my second batch. I remember. I had no money, no help besides my family. So I remember my mom staying up all night with me, sewing my woven labels on my shirts, you know. And That's the first, crazy. you know, and I remember the first event I ever did was I actually, because there was no events for me that I could do because I wasn't big enough. I actually would plan my own events in parking lots and, and get local rappers. And then I would get my mom to make nachos and my, and, and, and my wife to help me and my sister to do this and that just to market myself, you know. And that's the kind of like maniacal kind of hustle you have to have to make stuff work, you know. And that's... That's like the earliest memory of uh, for me and that I'll never forget just because it wasn't easy, you know? So yeah. whenever someone tells you they want to start a brand, I say, are you down to do this? Yeah. Because that's what you got to do. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Because nowadays you have a lot of people that reach out and, they, and because you're kind of known more of as like a brand creator, but you've done it from the ground up. You've done it from like creating images to being in parking lots selling it, to being in the magic show, to selling it online, so you know what it takes. Definitely. So when somebody reaches out, how do you know if they have kind of what it takes for you to work with them? You know, frankly, you're never gonna know, you know? Um, the one thing I would say, it's the people that come to me, you know, for lack of a better term, like hot shots, I'm yeah. like, All right, it's not gonna work out. I don't really, I don't really wanna work, you know? Um, but it's the people that, to me that, that 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 are humble and that because at the end of the day everyone believes they have the next best idea yeah you know everyone yeah, just seen it. you know everyone believes that they believe their own their, their own lies or whatnot not, not that they're lies but you have to also admit that you're actually coming for help basically i kind of give them what i would say not homework but but are you at this point are you ready to do this and this do you, you know can i give you uh feedback and you're not going to get all Get all, get all butt hurt over it, you know? Can I give you constructive criticism? You're gonna take it, and we're gonna go back to the drawing board and, and continue? And that's kind of how, how I can tell. It's, yeah. it's, it's from my experience, and I'm sure it's not always correct, but when I work with someone and they're just, I sense like more of an ego, I just, I, I, I'd rather not even work. Yeah. You know, I try to make it more of a partnership because I want to help them grow and and it helps my company as well right but but that's kind of how i feel about that yeah yeah for sure because sometimes you have you have like you know somebody's willing to work hard on their own brand even though they have to tweak something right to make it happen they have to be able to accept that that's reality facts um yep. yeah because for example if and that's this is a super lesson if you're out there and you have an image or an idea or or but you know, somebody's not willing to buy it yet, you have to be able to understand why, and you have to be able to understand that you simply need to change something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes changing something makes something great, but if you're stuck with wanting to push something super hard, but nobody's taking it in, nobody's buying it, you can't go to a swap meet and sell it, you can't go to a fair and sell it, then it's time to work with somebody that's done it Say, all right, well, what can I do? Take the feedback and then reshuffle. We all got to pivot. Yep. Uh, and, and for example, one of, the, one of the things that I've seen is like, if you've created something, like how, how many brands do you think you've, you've created like in your business right now? I mean, from, from when I started my business, I would say a minimum of like 10 to 15, yeah. you know, and not all of them are, are, are graphic uh, 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 brands like as in graphic tees yeah but uh it's the same almost kind of same process as long as you follow it you yeah. know it's kind of like like working out right if you follow like your regimen you know you're going to get to a specific point but then your body gets used to you got to switch it up yeah. you got to pivot and yeah. that's kind of like the same thing with this you know there's a roadmap to it but you have to pivot depending on on your consumer the demographic you're, you're pursuing all that and yeah i mean that's kind of how i go about yeah, it. yeah and then you've seen like sometimes stuff doesn't work and you have to take it as a learning experience and then move on. And I see a lot of, sometimes people take a failure as this big, huge wall, mm -hmm. and then you get paralyzed into doing something. Have you done stuff that just tanked? All the time. Yeah. <laughs> That's part of the and, game. Man. And what's your process of, of like having something fail and then still keeping, keep on going? It's just my, it's just, I'm so consumed with 
growing things yeah. from scratch and just my visions that I have as, as to where I want to be at. And that's what keeps me going, you know, and basically what I preach in my brands and all the positive affirmations is, is not only is it for, for my people that are buying my stuff, right? But it's to motivate myself yeah. to not quit, you know, to go get money or to yeah. go do this, you know? Yep. So it's, it's basically just that's my vision. And that's why I want to emphasize that because if you have a failure and you get paralyzed, then that's when you lose. Mm -hmm. you, only, you only lose when you quit, yep. you know? And that's something to really take away is that if you see any successful people, failures are just part of it. It's, a, it's just a revolving door and it's a, you can't treat it as a brick wall, you know? For example, I see from all the failed images and failed brands and, and like I see stuff that stands out. For example, I have this that I see and I'm gonna show it on camera because it's an icon that you created. Yep. It's from uh, you, you know, it's a little get money angel, all right? And the reason why I wanted to pull this out is because um, this is something that, that you know, now it's, it's trademarked, it's registered, but it just came from an idea. Yeah. And it's something, if you look at, you know, your social media, if you look at some of the things, you have people tattooing this on themselves mm -hmm. and you have people like, being kind of you know drawn in by what this says when you have a hit like that it's it's important to say all right well how can i deliver this in a quality way to the customers over and over again mm -hmm. and be able to do that so how would you say like the delivery of your product and the quality in which you ship it like what what's the importance that you see in that yeah i mean the funny thing that you bring bring that up about that angel too is that that's my logo but I didn't even have that until like four years into the brand. Yeah. So that kind of goes back to what you're saying about pivoting. You know, you know, when when I saw that nobody was buying things at first, and and it's funny you say the swap me because I actually did the swap me as well at first. And so one thing, you yeah. know, it was like depressing. Yeah. And that's that's when, uh, you know, certain people around me quit. You yeah. know, and I kept going. Um, but it kind of, you know, to go to that point, it kind of I kept pivoting, and the evolution of, of of my company led to that. To 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 me, just one day saying. Just visualizing that, you know, yeah. and, and me, since it's such an, a simple yet uh, uh, iconic logo, I need to figure out how to deliver it in different formats so that people are just like, oh, it's the same thing, you know, white on this or whatever, you yeah. know. So I, I do as many things as I can so it doesn't get old, you know. So it just looks new, new colorways, match it to a sneaker, match it to your outfit, match it to whatever. But most importantly is what does it stand for? And then that goes into why people are getting this tattoo, you know, yeah. on their arm, on the guy, the guy on his face, you know, like, like, <laughs> like everything, you know, because what, what it stands for is, 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 is many things, you know, yeah. so you have to always figure out how to take care of your product and deliver quality and quality is, is more than just a quality t-shirt and a print. It's also customer, uh, customer service. Yeah. It's quality, you know, in your graphics, everything has to be top notch quality. And that's when people are going to buy into it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things that, like we we preach it and i think we probably coined the term here which was the retail ready quality yep. right which means that like when when stuff is produced is is ready for the rack for for people to buy it yep. right so if you could walk me through kind of uh you know what what you do to set up a brand online and making sure that you don't have excess inventory and making sure that like you can pivot colors and how, how, how can somebody do that when they got to go get samples and they got to go do this and they got to do all these jump through hoops to be able to do that. How did you manage to be able to scale like that? I was able to scale that because I've always just growing up, I've always lived on a shoestring budget. Yeah. So when I created my business, it was the same model. It was how do I spend as little as possible to make as much as possible? Yeah. You know, even if I made a little less on the profit margin, but I, but I could, in a sense, spend less to get there, I would choose that method. Yeah. And that was just the way I started, right? So, so yeah, I mean, you know, once I, once I was introduced to direct-to-garment printing and just um, its capabilities, I, I fell in love. That's perfect for what I, I kind of exist like and, and, and preach about business, you know? So I was able to start with my black and the white and maybe add a third color, a color like navy or red, yeah. you know? But as I scaled over the years, I was able to, to then add to 15 colors but I always keep all my brands within a specific, just like cookie cutter starting point, you know, by no means does that mean that it looks all, you know, basic, 
but at least I know that this is what I got to work with. And I'm not scared of, of, of making a crazy decision and say, let me add this garment, you know? But once it's proven, then I'll stock it for good, knowing that I'm gonna fulfill it for all my other, and I offer to all my clients and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. You know, so I just try to methodically plan. But with that said, I'm not scared to take a risk when I feel my creative need to do so. Yeah, yeah, you know? for sure. So, for example, if somebody, uh, like you, you do it a little bit backwards. You create uh, a limited amount of products. You have colors, but you don't focus too much on, you know, getting all these samples and all these sizes and stock and having that. You you pretty much like see what sells. Then yeah. you create. Then you print it and you ship it. I let the market dictate. My hustle, basically, is what I'm saying. You know, so like, <laughs> let the market dictate your hustle. I like that. <laughs> so, so I kind of just base it on that. Yeah. And if you know, if if I don't wear pink, but I'm seeing salmon shirts are are, are killing it, yeah. I'm gonna stock salmon shirts all day and offer it to all my clients, and then figure out a way to flip it to make it look new and and and, and refreshing. You know. Yeah. So you would suggest like, what if somebody's on a shoestring budget? Would you sh suggest like sometimes they'll go to to a print shop and the and the print shop obviously wants to sell and they're like hey you need to do a sample of each this is your sample fee this is you know you should do a minimum of you know uh, 50 100 units like would you have somebody invest in that or would you have somebody look for somebody else like yourself to say hey you know what to start my brand let's see what sells first and then produce like what would you what would be your top tip for somebody that wants to start something like that I would advise to go the DTG route. Yeah. And that's by no means disrespect to screen print. You know, I love screen print. Yeah, it's you all, do both, right? I do, I do all everything. Yeah. Embroidery, that, he pressed everything. Yeah. Every production method solves something different. Yeah. You know, so, but if I were to start, a, a, let's say, you know, that might be a cool video in the future. It's like, yeah. let's start a brand with $500, you yeah. know? But I would start with, uh, with, with DTG, sample everything you want, you know? And then from there, go sell. Sell, sell, sell. And now it's way different to start a brand because you can essentially put a hundred different designs online and never have to make anything. The only cost to you, basic cost, is your sweat equity if you're a designer or paying a designer to design the stuff, you know? So that's definitely the way that I would go about it. Yeah, that's awesome. So basically, you want to, going back to letting the market dictate, so you instead of like printing all this stuff and then going out to sell it, you want to put it online, see what customers are gonna buy, focus on what they're liking, what they're buying, produce that, reach out to somebody that has the expertise to do it so that you don't waste your time. Exactly, because before, like in 2011 when I was making my brand and, and let's say I had $500, right? The screen printer wanted 800. So I'm yeah. already upside down in the business, it's already, I'm already failing, right? In this model, it's, okay, well you have all your designs, I'll charge you, you want 10 samples? Okay, here you go, here's, here's 200 bucks, here's all your samples. Perfect, I got 300 bucks. Now I can spend that on Facebook, or I can spend that on, on design. Um, I, or I could allocate the entire rest of the money to an actual good designer that's gonna charge me 75 bucks an hour, whatever it is, yeah. to give me something quality instead of trying to pay the screen printer $800 and then trying to find a hookup from an intern for an epic design. It's never gonna work that way. No. Yeah. And so you see sometimes people like try to create their own design that's bad quality, but the the idea or the mission is good. You're saying you're better off paying a good designer if you suck, mm -hmm. so that you can get to your For mission. For sure, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. I mean, because we, you know, we've been at this for about 15 years, and and I've seen like so many good designs, but then a ton of bad designs. But sometimes people don't want to admit that they're not a good designer. Oh yeah. But then, that, but, yeah, but then the <laughs> idea is good, you know, mm -hmm. some people could actually take the brand and do something with it, but then some of them just die when time to offload the design to someone else. Yeah, you know? fe feedback kills dreams, you know, some people don't <laughs> want to accept it, you know, yeah. so you have to understand that. And even now, you know, I'll ask people questions on my, you know, Instagram and say, here, yeah. what do you think of this? Or give me some ideas. And I'll welcome all ideas, you know, just to hear, you know, some temple thing I suck, then I got to figure it out. You uh, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go through the comments too. And I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> damn, that's yeah, rough. Yeah. So I, I'll say, what, what are, like, do you have an idea on your print on demand side of your business for your brands? How many, how many, uh, like shirts did you do last year? Um, as, as a company wide for Marzuno? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, I mean, our goal is always to do a, a thousand a day. Yeah. Um, I would say we're between like 15, 18,000 to like 30,000 a month. So, I mean, if I had to guesstimate That's just b based on the fluctuation of Christmas time and stuff yeah. like that, I'd maybe say like two, 250, 250,000 yeah. in your shirts. That's crazy. Yeah. So, think about doing the, the direct to garment production of 250,000 shirts. There's got to be something that you're learning across the, the way of like, for example, as you're scaling that, what are some of the challenges that you've seen? Like, for example, today we're here working on workflow, right? Yep. And we decided to make this video because there's a lot that we could share with, with people on how to improve that part. So, I mean, what, what are your kind of challenges that you see as you scaled personalized uh, DTG and, and, you know, some of the stuff that, that uh, you knew that you needed to hop on? There's so many challenges. Yeah. It's so it's it's every day is a challenge, you know, and 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 it's almost like the quality is so amazing that I, in my head I I deserve to get all this, you know, all, all these obstacles because the outcome is that much greater, yeah. right? But th you know, through the years, I mean, it's been from you know stocking the right inventory, you know, what's the size scale that 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 stores buy or or, or customers buy? What are the favorite colors? You know, oh, this shirt might be staining. Why is that happening? Yeah. Or how do we keep it cleaner? Or the reds are getting stained. Post production, how do we clean that? To figure out the higher QC team. You know, every day is just an opportunity to get better, in my opinion. You know, so I always try to to to, to build a system, knowing that my next goal is to break that system. Yeah. Because that means that I'm doing more business. You know, so so let's say you and me are figuring out works you know, workflow. Yeah. You know, my goal is going to be to break it because I got too much business. So you're like, hey, how do we take it to the next level? Yeah, exactly. You know? So, yeah, I mean, there's different, so many different obstacles and it's just crazy. Yeah. So, for example, if you have, and this is important to touch on because in every business, as you grow, there's what what's called the break point, right? So you're saying if you're in a situation where you're doing uh, not 250,000 shirts personalized per year, and maybe you're doing 100, 500. 10 a day in every setup and every growth trajectory of a business you have what we call breakpoints right so mm -hmm. at what point does, does something break and what do you do about it right so for example we're resolving making sure that you know when you have so many print files that are hustle based right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is the right hustle on the right shirt oh yeah for sure. <laughs> <laughs> hustle a b or c yeah. yeah yeah so so it's like to make sure your production goes smoothly you got to see okay well if our break point is going to be making sure that the proper artwork is being printed on the shirt how do we solve it you know or the quality control on the back end when it's all printed how do you prevent shipping something that's not going to delight the customer mm -hmm. right so so I mean we we're in a in a I'd say a unique place to be able to resolve some of these issues with uh, workflow software and new processes and all that. I think it takes identifying that when something breaks is an opportunity. Yep. You know, we're just saying, hey, you know what? This is this is a tough thing to do. That's why we're not going to do it. Yeah. You know, and that's where a lot of people fail. They think, hey, you know what? This is tough. You know, nothing that's worthwhile is really easy to do. Never. You know, what are your main goals that you want to accomplish with uh, your workflow, like for this year? Work is a very interesting, you know, idea to me. And that's why I'm so gravitated towards it. And yeah. I'm always willing to discuss it with you is I, I'm trying to basically remove every single little gap of error from my business, you know, so that when I do have errors, they just, they're magnified by a million percent, you know. So I'm, I'm trying to increase, you know, our time efficiency. I'm trying to decrease errors. You know, I can't even imagine how many, you know, shirts we have that are printed on the wrong design, wrong color, and they're perfectly printed shirts. Yeah. But ultimately the customer's not gonna want a, a pink shirt instead of a black shirt, you yeah. know? So I'm trying to, you know, eliminate that. I'm trying to know every single little cost in my workflow, you know, so I know where I'm making the most money or where I can save more money um, and get just really, really, really specific with things. Yeah, so for example, for you, It'd be interesting to see like how long a certain operator takes to print. You know, what's kind of the error rate for that person? Mm -hmm. uh, how many shirts is each guy doing per day? Yep, exactly. Uh, and have an automated way uh, of tracking it. So as you grow, like how important do you think automation is? 
is very important. You know, I, I just, I, I can't visualize myself getting to the next step without having all that data. You know, I need analytics per printer. I need to know, okay, we actually print the best on Saturday mornings from nine to 10 out of the whole month or out of the whole week. I need <laughs> yeah, to know that kind of, you know, it's kind of like analytics. I need, yep. I need that data, you know? Like you were saying, you like to know what you're doing. You like to get, you know, quotes and you like to find the, the best solution money-wise, time-wise. Like, what would you say, like, uh, I don't know if you got quotes and stuff to do a custom software solution for and automating your orders. Like, like how much would that cost? Cost a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry to tell you, but you know, I, I did try to hire someone to do it myself. You know, <laughs> oh, nice. uh, it's very hard. Don't you know? Unless you have a lot of time and patience and money, don't do it. But uh, you know, I hired someone yeah. who you know, who sold me on the first date, kind of you know. Yeah. So they, you know, it, and it was very expensive. So I figured, okay, they it must be worth it because yeah. they're very expensive. After three months of, of of working on on it, you know, all I have to show is three months worth of invoices, you know, and oh, I ended shit. up scrapping the project. It, it's just so much to think about. It's yeah. so much to think about, especially when I'm already busy, you know, and, and even if they're sitting there at the desk next to you, it's just, it, it takes a lot more. It takes knowing the business to build a workflow. You can't just hire a, a, a super intelligent programmer to just build it when they don't even know the business, right? So it's very difficult and it's very expensive. You know, I must have spent at least like 35K you know, and on a part-time programmer for like Holy two, three months. Cow. Yeah, so it's it was a waste of money for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you know, I've and I've seen it because it's not the first time somebody says that. Like, for me, it's okay when somebody says, "Hey, you know, I'm thinking about like programming this in house." Right? I'm like, "Oh, all right, go go quote it, go check it out," because I know what it takes. You know, for example, when I decided. It was around, you know, 2013, 2014, where I specced out the first version of work, right? Mm. And, like, work is the only solution right now that, that has the front-end order uh, all the way through production, out through shipping, mm -hmm. and it's all integrated, right? But it all started for me seeing people on the shop floor with their USB sticks, all different versions of the files, seeing that, you know, they have their highlighter on. They don't know what really shipped, mm. what's, what's here, oh. what orders. You know, I saw that a lot and I'm like looking out to see what's out there. And what I could tell you is after all these years, every single month, for example, we have uh, we have a, a team of programmers in-house that's doing it. And we're releasing and updating the application twice a month, right? Because there's always new features, there's always new things to do. Mm -hmm. And I know that cost associated with it. I'm investing in it because I know it's the future of our industry to move forward, right? Because if we don't have automation, how are we going to do the 250,000 shirts, 500,000 shirts a year that are personalized, mm -hmm. right? People want to just choose the color. They want the product to be their own and then they want it tomorrow. Yeah. How do you deliver that at scale? You have to be able to automate it. Otherwise, you have so much waste. You know, you have so much downtime when it comes to labor. So that's one of the reasons like this. So if somebody says, hey, you know what? I'm thinking about I'm going to do it on my own. I'm like, all right. Try it. Yeah. <laughs> because I know. That's what you told me. Yeah. Try it. <laughs> and then I should have taken the 35K. <laughs> but, you know, the, the thing is, if you look at, like, you know, the guys eat a lot of snacks, you know, they drink a lot of coffee, you know, it, it's, it's, it's pretty costly to have a programming team in house. It's very <laughs> costly, for sure. But, you know, m mostly it's my time or your time that you're spending on this, you know. As a CEO, I mean, you know what it is to be overly busy you don't yeah. have time for yep. just the minutiae you know you have to everything has to be intended and every minute counts right so when you're spending all this time on something and if it doesn't work out it's just you're never going to get that time back yeah you know? exactly so your your goal is to work on growing the business versus like figuring out how automation works and you you just want to make sure you have your uh, production keeps growing you want to make sure that your quality raises and that you know, all of the waste in the in the process is eliminated. Right. So that's what you care about. For sure, I care about that because the customer knows when they're getting quality, and they they know if there's a, a something that's not quality in the whole process. You know, so if, if if you're always trying to make everything perfect, even though they're not buying work, they're buying T-shirts from me. Yeah, yeah. A faster delivery, and when I get those five star reviews, that 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 makes it all worth it. Yeah. You know. So that that. So delighting the customer when they get the product, but they get it fast 
and it's the right image, the right size, and all that stuff. That's the important part. Exactly. The, the delivery of your product over and over again and the process that you use to do it is as important as what you're shipping. 100%. That's how you guarantee they're going to come back five or six times in a year. Yeah. You know? No, that's, that's great insight. So what, what would you say, like, for you, you what, what's in the future for you to, to, for Marzuno to keep growing? In the future, I would like to continue just developing our in-house, you know, printing strategies, yeah. making them better, getting more machines, more DTG printers, uh, more decorating products, more new products that I can offer customers, including my own brands, yeah. and just efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. I mean, that's really what, I, what I'm about in anything. So in the future, I'm looking to, you know, to break the 30,000 in a month mark, you know, on, on, our, on our really busy months. Yeah. You know, that's, my, that's my, 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 my closest goal to mine right now. But uh, I mean, tomorrow I'll have a different goal that's, yeah, that's further sure. out, you know? Yeah, so, so that's the importance of like being able to create new products uh and grow your business uh and focus on that part focus on your top line focus on uh releasing new things because you don't know the next idea that you have is going to be a big pillar of your business exactly so i know you're busy you got a lot of stuff to do but where could uh you know somebody reach out to you if they want to create uh with you if they want to they want to learn more where how can they get a hold of you uh they can get a hold of me uh on my website marzuno dot com m a r s u n o dot com or and, or email us at hello uh, at marzuno dot com. Um, just basically reach out whether you want feedback on your design, you need help along the process of getting your product into market, um, sales, whatever it may be. You can reach out to us. I mean, we develop e-commerce websites. I mean, anything you can imagine in the selling t-shirts business, we can do it all. You know, we'll design it for you, get it into a store, and uh, you know, go from there. Yeah. And what's uh, where are you on Instagram? So my Instagram, a few, but you can follow me at Marzuno Creative or Marzuno. Um, follow me there. I'm always about, you know, visiting new decorating shows, um, giving advice uh, to, to, uh, to startups um, and just staying positive. Oh, and that's important because you're saying you just don't use the term vertically integrated. Um, you actually do it. Like, for example, like you're one of the companies that I've seen that has done retail stores on your own. You've done different e-commerce stores you've done other e-commerce where you're selling to others exactly so somebody can get come come to you and get advice on all of those different verticals yeah and, and the reason why i do that vic is because when i started my brand nobody wanted to help me out it was like uh like a secret recipe that you know their their great grandma made up and they can't tell you or teach you where to go yeah. you know so i kind of vowed to myself that as i grew and my business I would help people um, yeah. and, and kind of help them start their business. Obviously, like in life, nothing's free. Yeah. But but if I had that shortcut, I don't know where I'd be right now. Yeah, you know? that's true. That's true. And that's one of the, like I, I did a presentation recently and it was one of the topics was like the secrecy that's involved in success. Right. Mm. If you notice when you're coming up, uh, you see a lot of successful people. Right. And it seems like mm. it's a huge secret on how they're doing it. Exactly. And nobody's willing to share anything. That's one of the reasons why I decided to, you know, get out there and put some of these videos is because, like, just like you, I started from zero. And if there was, you know, people sharing on these different techniques and how they did it, then we'd both be farther along. Exactly. Right. But it's like, oh, it's a huge secret. I'm just going to get into my Lamborghini and then see you later, <laughs> you know. And then and that's that's one of the different things. And so you had to learn how to get into a retail store. You know, a lot of people think, hey, the main goal is for my stuff to be in retail. Mm -hmm. Right. But, you know, the differences, you know, online versus retail versus your own store and why some retails dying. Some some is growing when it's personalized and, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, if if you were to have one thing that like got you to where you're at and you're using as your, I would say, mantra for your future, what would that be? Be obsessed with what you do to the point that you, that's all you kind of you, you eat, sleep every day. You're kind of thinking about it. It's it's for it's pretty maniacal, man. I mean, yeah. you just don't stop. You just you don't stop. Maniac for your success. 
So you don't leave at 501 and <laughs> you know, you don't take your uh, you know, your 30 minute and your hour lunches and you don't show up at 9. Is that what you're saying? That's pretty much. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I bring my son to come work. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much Mario for giving us the time and I look forward to doing more videos with you and sharing with everybody on how like big brands are created from zero. Thank you everybody. Thank you.